Welcome back and welcome to the first video where we will take a closer look in the code. In this video here we will take the game Roller Maze and see how the game flows by looking into the code. Here we are in the main menu scene and you can see the instructions left mouse button for high scores, right mouse button to start the game and all this logic is handled in the main screen and the main menu panel script. If we open this up, we can see here in the update loop we have a differentiation if we are showing the main menu or the score screen, the high score screen. You can see it here down below. And if we are showing the main screen, we call the update main screen and check for the input here. And if we are pressing the right mouse button indicated by the number one, then show name input panel is called. And what that does, it just activates the game object with the name input panel and sets the input field to be the first selected game object so we can start typing right away. So let's take a look at that. Here that panel will get activated and here you can see this is the input field. We can enter text in here. And when we're finished entering our name, then we have the event here on end edit. That is something the input field of TextMesh Pro brings with it. And then we call on end edit name input field on the main menu panel. And what that does in the code is right down below here. We will get the player name that we have entered. And here you can see a small workaround because the event on end edit input field is called not just only when we're entering our name and hitting enter, but also when we're clicking outside of the text input field. So we don't want to count that as entering our name and telling the game, okay, that's it. And that is not really a bug, but it's by design. So we have to find a way to work around that. And what I have done is to check if the current press key is the return key. And if it's not the case, then we might have just left the text input field by clicking on another location. For example, when we enter in text here and click outside, then the focus will be lost from that text input field. And this event on end edit gets called. But if we have hit the return key, then we will check if there is a name entered and if not, we call the player anonymous and then the save name and start game function is called. That is the function right down below here. And all that does is saving the player name in the game manager and start the game by calling that function on the game manager. Let's see what that does. It just sets the current level and the total score to zero and restarts the current level, which is zero after we have set it to zero. And you can see what that does here. Basically, we tell the scene manager to load a new scene. And what scene that is, we have stored in the levels. You can see here in the game manager, we have this list in the game manager. And these are the scriptable objects. And if you watched the introduction, you may remember that we have the scene name entered here. So in the script, we get that scene name and load the scene accordingly. Let's do that by hand real quick. For example, open scene one. And those are the main actors here. Of course, our protagonist, the voting ball, we have to control. And also the game manager and the UI that brings a UI manager. And the UI manager and the rolling ball will get initialized in the awake and update methods. You can see it here. We set the singleton accordingly so we can access the UI manager from everywhere. And we set up a few other things like the map generator and the dictionary to find what sprite we want to render in the UI for what type of extra the player can select. And the same is true for the player controller. Let's find the start method. 
It has no awake but only a start method and here you can see there's a lot of setup going on, finding components so we don't need to find them in every frame, setting up arrays and lists and so on, finding the layer masks for the collision detection and so on. We will take a closer look at the player controller in the next video. And if you remember from the introduction video, the game manager is a singleton and it does not get destroyed on loading new scenes. So this game manager here will be carried over into the new level one scene. And that means that awake or start are no longer called because they are already called in the main menu scene. So whatever we want to do with the game manager in a new scene, we can't use awake and start, so we have to find another solution. And you can find the solution right here. The scene manager provides a simple event called scene loaded, and we will just subscribe to that. That means when a scene is completely loaded, the scene manager is invoking the scene loaded event and calls every script and every method that is subscribed to that event. And here by this notation, we subscribe the on scene loaded method the event. So when the scene is completely loaded, this method here is called. And in here we can do everything that we want the game manager to do when the level is loaded. For example, we want to play the main menu music when we're in the main menu scene, or we want to play the level music for the level we are in. And we also want to initialize the UI by updating the number of the level, the name of the level, the high score, and so on. And after all that setup, the game can begin and the most important part plays the player controller. And let's take a look real quick at the update method. In the update, every frame we calculate timers, for example, how long the player already has played in that level. We check for mouse buttons and we check the input if the ball should be moved. Then we refresh certain tile variables, check for collisions, check the floor tiles. Maybe we fall down when we have no floor under us. And then we activate an extra the player has maybe selected and activated. And we update that every frame also. Let's bring up the structure of the player controller real quick to find the methods we are looking for. You can see there's a lot going on in that class. So that's why we are making a separate video for that. But in the end, the player will reach the exit or the player will die. And that are the most important parts in the whole game loop. And let's take a look at exit level. When we are reaching the position in the level where the exit tile is, then this function gets called and we start the exit level sequence, which just lets the ball shrink a bit. So we simulate the falling down and then the game manager is called with finished level. Let's take a look in here. Here we enter the player in the high score list using the high scores class and we show the level finished panel to the player. Let's go back to the player controller. The other thing that may happen is that we die of course. And you can see here the fall into void sequence that gets called when we're dying. Let's just take a look where it gets called fall into void and that is called in two different methods. For one, when our energy is below zero, we have a property for the energy and whenever we are setting the energy to a new value, we are also checking if the energy is below zero and if it is, then we are dead and call fall into void. The same is true for check cracks and holes. That is here part of the main update loop of the player. And you can see here when no tile is found, then also fall into void is called. And that is starting the fall into void sequence where the ball shrinks to simulate the falling. And then the lives are decreased. And then we're checking if we have enough lives left to show the respawn panel. And if not, we show the game over panel here by calling the game manager and 
instance game over. You can see it's directly below the finished level method. And here we are saving the new high score in case the player has achieved a new high score. And then we show the game over panel. And from that part on, the game manager also handles the input because on the different level finished panel or game over panels, there is a text that shows what happens when the player presses the left and right mouse button. And for example, when the game is finished, it doesn't matter if we're clicking left or right, we load the main menu. When just a level is finished, then pressing left or right mouse button loads the next level. We will take a look at that in a minute. And when the game is over, pressing left or right mouse button also loads the main menu. And load next level means just increasing the current level number by one and usually calling restart current level, which is here, which we saw a bit earlier, loading the scene for that level. Or when we have completed all levels, then we call finish game. And that is similar to game over, except that it shows a different panel, of course, with a different text. And that is the main game loop and perspective of the game manager and the player. There's a lot more going on in the level, of course, and the most significant things that are happening have to do with the player controller that controls how the ball is moving, how the collisions are detected and so on. And we will take a look at that in the next video.